welcome. God's family, all are welcome. So we welcome you who are present here in the church, and we welcome you who are joining us from home. We are all God's beloved. In a special way today, we welcome Harlow Elizabeth LaPerrier, who is going to be baptized today, and her parents, uh, Mike and Angela, and her godparents, Dan and Renee, and all her family and friends that are gathered here for her special day. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. God is always with us, guiding us and supporting us. We don't always recognize God, but God is faithful and with us, loving us and caring for us. Let's pause for a moment now in silence to recognize how God has been present to us this past week, this morning, and let us give thanks. Now, remembering that we are loved and that we sometimes fall short in following Jesus' commandment to love one another, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess of the ways we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. For the times we have not loved you with our whole heart and have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Together let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. From the book of James. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our Lord, glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat, please. While to the one who is poor, you say, stand over there, sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, that he has promised to those who love him. But if you have dishonored the poor, it is, and it is not the rich, who oppress you. It is not they who drag you into the courts. It is not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you. You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the law, the whole law, but fails the one point, has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, 
but you do not have works. Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is good at that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 146 responsibly by half verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth. For there is no God in When they breathe their last, they return to earth. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. Whose soul is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them. Who keeps his promise forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed. And food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and the widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God will reign throughout all generations. Amen. to Mark. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought him to a deaf they brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. historical places. How about you? 
that something you'd like to do? Kind of take a tour, maybe, of, an, uh, of some historical site? Um, I, I get fascinated by that, just to, to imagine myself in that time, or the people who lived here, who are no longer on this earth, right, that lived in this, in this way or in this certain place. I just like my, let my imagination go. I don't know about you, but if you've gone to some of these historical sites, um, historical places, often you're pointed to a cemetery as part of the, um, the tour. Because, I don't know why. Maybe it's because you can just go, go and wander through and just see just how long it's been since these people actually walked this earth. Huh? It's kind of fascinating to, to do that and to read the, the stones that are left behind. Uh, some of them um, are quite funny. I mean, one of them in particular that said, um, I told you I was sick. <laughs> and another one said, Here lieth Jonathan Brown, an atheist, all dressed up and no place to go. <laughs> about when we visit these places and you think of the people who have passed, I just, it just reminds me of the importance of God in my life. Huh? Without God in our life, what, we just kind of aimlessly wander through life. But God helps us and supports us through life. And in Jesus, we come to understand that there's more to life than just that we see. Huh? A life with God forever someday. So God is really important to us. So we wouldn't be here in the church this morning. How is God present to us? I think we could all say that God is with us, right? God is with us and supporting us. But how is God present to us? Is God present to us literally, as in physically present to us? Do, do we experience God through some vision that we've had of God in our lives? I would say that's probably not the case. Maybe for none of us here to have that physical encounter here with God. So what do we mean when we say that God is present to us? You know, that God is with us. How is God present to us? How? What do you think? When you say God is present to you, how do you mean that? How do you mean that? Feel, feel love in your heart. Na and nature, God creation, right? What else? In other people that we experience God and God's presence through them. Yeah, all of these, and I'm sure we could stop and talk, think about it. Think about so, so many more. Huh? Yeah, we know God's presence and we, we experience God's presence in these ways that you mentioned. And I would say we experience God's presence mostly in the people in our lives. People loving us, showing compassion to us when we need that compassion, compassionate ear and heart. People who, in, pray, prayer? in prayer? In prayer. In prayer. Talking to God in prayer. We can feel the presence of God. We, we have that here. <laughs> when we gather together to worship on Sunday, huh? we can feel that presence of God's spirit to us. Yeah. But the people in our life give us that physical manifestation of God's presence. God's love and compassion and God's mercy, forgiveness, God's kindness. It's through the people in our lives. I felt that in my life. The pe people in my life that have supported me and been reflections of God's love for me. This past winter, my father died. And receiving that phone call from my mother in the middle of the night, I was in shock. Um, once I got off the phone with my mother, um, Leslie was there, my wife Leslie. And she held me. And the tears just flowed. That was God's presence and blessing in my life. 
And then I went off and spent time with my family for a couple of days. And I had lived in the, left in the middle of the night. And Katie, my daughter Katie, my 17-year-old daughter Katie, she wasn't there when I left. And I had talked to her on the phone. But when I got home, she was at the door. And she hugged me. This is, this is a teenager. <laughs> she hugged me and held me. God was present to me and her. And the funeral, members of this community came up for the funeral. God was present to me in, that, in, in my family, in their presence there. And the cards that I received and, and the conversations I've had with you, this community, God was present to me, loving me, showing me compassion. Yes, God is present in our lives. God is always with us showing us how much God loves us. Always present. And we do that for one another. In the letter to James we heard today, the last sentence we heard was, so faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. talk about God's love and that God loves me and say that's our faith I believe that that God loves me but if we don't love others then it's useless faith that is not in action faith that is not loving and showing compassion to others and kindness and mercy and forgiveness to others is useless to God that's what James is saying here we are called to be messengers of God's presence in our world. If we, if sometimes if we find ourselves saying there's not enough love in this world. There's not enough compassion in this world. Then get to work. Don't wait for someone else. Show love. And show compassion. Be that presence of God for others. Harlow is going to be baptized in just a few, few moments. And we, especially her loved ones that are around her, are called to show her love and the presence of God's love in her life and teach her how to love in order to be a faithful disciple of Jesus. Because as we know, it's all about love and loving. So as we go into this week, wherever we go, bring God's presence and God's love and compassion to those you encounter. Wherever it might be, bring it to them. You won't know if they need it or not, but I bet it's just a good, it's a pretty good bet that they need to hear that, because we do. So instead of being a presence of gloom and doom, a negative presence in someone's life, finding complaints about everything in the world around, they had enough of that out there. Don't be that presence. Be God's presence, as Jesus has shown us. Love. Love. for a couple of cousins that need to come in for the baptism. They're in Sunday school right now. <laughs> it's our first Sunday of Sunday school.
Okay, so just parents, godparents, you can stand. And uh, the loved ones, the family members here, if you've got one of the baptism booklets, which you are at the ends of the pews here, you can share if you didn't get one. Someone does further in. Um, if you could share with one another to follow along the ceremony for baptism. You ready? So, in unison together, we're reading the bold parts. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. We present Otto Elizabeth McCurry to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help your child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce evil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. And do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. I do. And will all of you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Harlow in her life in Christ? If so, please respond, we will. We will. We will. We will. Now let us join together and renew our own baptismal covenant. Please stand. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect and restore the beauty and integrity of all creation? I will with God's help. Invite you now to be seated. Come up to The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as Messiah the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit 
Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who pass through it in baptism may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, here we go. <laughs> she knows she's taking it off. Wow, look at that. Oh my goodness, you've been practicing. Oh, wow. Hi, Harlow. Harlow, baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Surprised you, huh? <laughs> okay, you're all set there. Good job. Not so bad. <laughs> Harlow, receive the light of Christ through your godparents. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a child of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. And when the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon Harlow the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Carlo, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Good job. Thank you. And now together, let us welcome Harlow, our newly baptized member. Harlow, we receive you into the household of God. May you learn to confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Please join me in congratulating Harlow on his baptism. Good job. He's great.
while trusting in God and God's love and that God is caring for us, let's turn to God with our prayers. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Alan and Carol, our bishops, for Julia, our bishop-elect, and for all other church leaders, that they might faithfully lead us in the way of Jesus, the way of love. God, in your love for us, hear our prayer. For all peoples of faith, that we might witness to the world around us the love, mercy, and compassion of God. God, in your love for us, hear our prayer. For the innocent victims of war and violence in our world, especially the people of Ukraine and Gaza, may the people of this world have the courage and conviction to embrace the paths of God's peace. God, in your love for us, hear our prayer. For all those who are refugees and immigrants, that they will be kept safe from all danger and shown kindness, compassion, and love. God, in your love for us, hear our prayer. For those who are discriminated against and have been pushed to the margins of our society due to their poverty, age, ethnic heritage, race, gender identity, sexual orientation, or mental and physical health, that we will allow God's spirit to work through us as we stand together as members of the one family of God. God, in your love for us, hear our prayer. For our families, that love and peace might be nurtured, that healing and forgiveness might be valued, and that faith and discipleship might be witnessed to one another. God, in your love for us, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones, especially those whom we now remember. May they live forever in the joy of God's presence, and may all who mourn their deaths be strengthened in the hope and promise of everlasting life. God, in your love for us, hear our prayer. For all those names who have been recorded in our prayer request book, and for the needs of those whom we now mention aloud or in silence. God, in your love for us, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, with confidence and trust in the transforming power of your love, we turn to you with these prayers, the ones that have been spoken and the others we offer up to you silently. And we ask that you grant them. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us join together and uh, pray the prayer of St. Francis, which is on page 7 of our service booklet. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And let us uh, welcome our Sunday school children back into the church for the first time in this new school year by singing uh, Children Are a Gift from Heaven on page 12 of the service booklet. Children are a gift from heaven, each soul trusting and unique. God's example.
<laughs> we can be seated uh, for just a moment. Children have them with them. Why don't you hold them up? Hold them up. What did you, what did you, what did you create? Oh. Very nice. Good job. Good job, everybody. Some wonderful artists here. <laughs> and we have a, a few other uh, announcements for this morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Just a quick reminder that next Sunday is the third Sunday of the month, so it is Sunday. Sunday. So um, even though throughout the month we will collect uh, sneakers uh, for redemption and cans and bottles, uh, we will collect them specifically next Sunday so we can continue our fundraising to do everything from buying the, the water that we use in our water dispenser to the good and green team vests to all the different things we do. So thank you for all you've done and continue to do it and I'll uh, see you next Sunday. Very good. Thank you good and green team for continuing to remind us of the importance of caring for God's creation, sustaining it for our younger generations. Huh? At our uh, service next Sunday, um, four times a year, quarterly, each season, we have um, prayers for healing. And so we'll have prayers for healing as part of the service, about the 8 o'clock and the 10 o'clock service uh, uh, next Sunday. Everyone will be invited to receive prayers for healing because we all need them. We all need healing in one form or another. So again, next Sunday will be an opportunity for us to receive those prayers for healing and to be anointed with the blessed oil. Uh, today, in case you didn't or forgot about it, today's our barbecue Sunday. I'm assuming you didn't if you brought in your food to share downstairs on your way in. So um, afterwards, we invite you to come on downstairs and join in that time of fellowship, uh, hamburgers and hot dogs and whatever the rest of the things that you brought as well to share. Uh, we'll begin um, eating at, at 11.30, so it gives us some time to get down there, grab something to drink, um, and find a place at a table. Um, and then we'll begin at 11.30. I also put some, some standing tables outside if anybody wanted to be outside. There's some tables right along the rail um, on the upper, on that pro porch section as well. Uh, so be because we're going into the barbecue afterwards, um, we're going to just slide out at the end and meet you downstairs. Um, so we're not going to be processing to the back of the church. Let's be reminded once again this Sunday of Jesus' commandment to us. He only gave one commandment, and it's found in John's Gospel. And it's to help his followers to be faithful to him. And his commandment to us, and not a suggestion, but a commandment to us is this. Love one another as I have loved you. It's by this that they will know that you are my disciples. It is by the love that you have for one another. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Maker and Redeemer of all, we lift our hearts to thank you. You created the earth as a place of encounter between you and your creatures. You called your people from slavery and wilderness to covenant and abundant life. You gave your children manna to share, and you welcomed all people to the joy of your companionship. And so we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven as we proclaim your unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Life-giving God, you share your bread with the poor, and you make this banquet the place where we are united with, where we are united as one body in your Son. Make this meal a moment of unity for your people. And let those who share in it be ambassadors of compassion and healing for our wounded world. Send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine that through them we might encounter the presence of the risen Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. God of the afflicted, you have chosen the poor in the world to be heirs of the kingdom that you have promised to those who love you. Make your church rich as you are rich in compassion and mercy, in wisdom and grace. And make your church poor as you are poor in sharing the suffering of those who endure injustice and knowing the pain of all who are recipients of the world's anger. Hasten the day when your gentle mercy triumphs and all find a place at the feast of your kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We who break this bread share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body in Christ. The gifts of God for all the people of God. Just a reminder that in the Episcopal Church here at Church of the Good Shepherd, all are welcome to receive communion. Um, it doesn't matter what denomination you belong to, you are welcome to receive communion. If you wish to receive the presence of Jesus, we encourage you and welcome you to do so.
Together, let us pray. God of unbounded love and compassion, you have united us with Christ and one another and have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. May this time of worship transform our hearts as we go forth to proclaim in word and deed your message of love through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before uh, the blessing, um, just once again, congratulate Harlow on her special day. And it's, uh, um, it's so good to have your family gather around you, Harlow. Uh, family is so important. And this is your extended family the family of Good Shepherd, and we'll be praying for you um, in your life. I also want to uh, give thanks uh, for our, our Sunday school program and our Sunday nursery program that starts today. Um, you noticed um, Preston came in to do uh, part of the music at the offertory time, and then you went out. It wasn't because that's all he could take. <laughs> it's, uh, he and his wife, Allie, are, are in our nursery today with our young ones. So it's a wonderful thing. And, and we saw uh, uh, Vivi explain the story that she did. She's our teacher for um, one of our teachers. And Dale will be, as our teacher, will be on next week. And, uh, and Jan was assisting um, Vivi today in our Sunday school room. So it's because of our volunteers that make these ministries to our children uh, possible on this great festive day. Just a reminder, the barbecue is following downstairs. Uh, if, if you have um, mobility issues, you find it easier to use the stairs to go this way, it's fine. Otherwise, I, I would just recommend that you go that way and go through the double doors into the hall. It would be easier um, to do that. We now ask God's blessing upon us before we depart. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy and has always protected you and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. Our worship has ended, so let our service begin to God and to one another. Go into the world loving the people that you meet. Let your presence light new light in others, in their hearts. So, good people, good shepherd, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.